In this Python exercises video, we are going to work through some examples requiring uh, file input and output and uh, exceptions. So from this point on, first of all, we want to put all of our mainline logic inside a main function, which I've already created here and we want to validate all user input validate all user input okay so exercise one we are displaying the, uh, the first five lines of a specified text file so write a python program that asks the user for the name of a file the program shall display only the first five lines of the file's contents if the file contains less than five lines it should display the file's entire contents it's kind of like using the head uh, the, the head command in Linux. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is output the program's purpose. So we will print this program outputs the first. Oh, instead of specifying exactly, we'll do uh, lines. To output and set that equal to five. So this program outputs the first lines to output lines of a text file, period. All right, and the next part will ask the user to enter a file name. Now there's a couple of ways that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, validate a file name, but there is a module called the OS module, and I specifically want to use the OS modules is file and that will return true if the file exists and return fall, false false if the file does not exist. So I'm going to do uh, define does file exist and that's going to accept a file name. All right, and I'm going to return os dot path dot is file, and we'll pass into that the file name that we have uh, entered. So this function determines if a specified file name exists. All right. So we could do something like while does file name exist file name is false and we can tell the user the specified file does not exist and just ask them for another file name end while okay whoops lowercase n Our file name there this could also be a path file path might be a better name here let's run this and see it in action oh I forgot a new line character at the end of my program introduction all right, let's do something off the wall like A. I know that does not exist. The file does not exist. Now, I have a feeling that this is not going to work. I created this earlier. Right. All right. All right. Oops. Okay. <sighs> Okay. 
Um, let's do chapter six. Ethics.txt. Okay, that's what I thought. I I I think this is a bug in Visual Studio Code. And it's and and this is this is what it is. I don't remember this happening when I wrote these programs over the summer. But when I set the uh, I guess we can call it the root or the home folder for my folder structure here, it assumes that that is um, the, well, it's it's the root of how my where my programs run from. So technically, these programs should only, uh, should look for files with the same names in the same folder. But as you saw right here, it said that the file did not exist. And it's because it's looking in the root of my Python exercises folder, uh, which is probably great most of the times, except this time. And when I specified chapter six, which is the folder that the ethics file exists in, it was fine. So one way that we can get around this is to, and give me a second to, there it is, remove folder from workspace and add the folder, specifically add the folder that you're working in instead of a, uh, like a, a higher folder in the hierarchy. So I'm just gonna specify chapter six. And now you'll notice that when I run this, I can just specify ethics.txt and it takes it because it's now looking in the same folder as it's supposed to. And I think this is a quirk with Visual Studio Code. So just FYI if you run into that. All right, so this is my validate file uh, entered, uh, entered file name is good. All right. So now that we've done that validation, there's an argument that we don't necessarily need to use a try statement here. Uh, and I'm probably not going to because the only thing that would cause a problem now is that if while running the program, the file was deleted, uh, that could cause a problem. However, even with a try statement, it's just going to say there was a problem and you're not really going to understand what happened. Well, maybe you would. I don't know. Let's try it. So inside a try statement, accept. So this exception is going to be um, file not found. I'd be very, let's see, what's the info for this one? Oh, that doesn't tell me anything. File already exists. Oh, now that's not going to help me. File not found. Well, if I get this error, then. So I don't think that's going to be a sufficient error. File. Yeah, there's only two. Yeah. I think I'm just going to uh, not use the try here because I validated that the file exists using this function so I know the file exists. So let's do file object equals open. We'll pass into it the final name and we'll open it for reading and We'll close the file object. CL, there it is, here. So, for line in file object, it's gonna allow me to loop through each line. I want to
Is this the best way? Probably not. Probably would not be the best way here. Let's do uh, line count. Count. Set that equal to zero. While line count is less than five. I'll have to test this to make sure it's the logic is right. File object. File object dot read line. All right. So we will print that out and then increment line count. Let's replace that five there with lines to output. I think this might be, I think this might be it. So according to the example, it should output the title and the first four lines if we're using the ethics file, which we will be. Ethics.txt. Ah, notice the new line care. Okay, so we get a new line character at the end of each line. That's just part of the file. We also get a new line character at the end of the print. So let's drop the end. Well, this might be a good time to use the, is it R strip? R, yeah, R strip. And this allows us to remove a character from the end. And let's remove the new line characters from the end of each line of the file instead of each print statement. So this would be a good example of showing this. Ethics, txt, and there we are. Uh, we could do uh, an empty print here to get that separation between the input and the output. So this holds, this is a, a counter variable. Holds number of line reads. Okay. And, and that accomplishes this first program. There's a couple of ways that we can go about doing this. I like this function. Yeah, we have to import OS, which is, is kind of a bummer. And there's other ways that we could do this, but I, I, I like to use, uh, I like using things that already exist. So this is uh, uh, reading the uh, first five lines. Now, what if I change it to read the first 15 lines? I think this might, I think this might cause a problem because there are not 15 lines in the ethics. So let's see what this does for us. Yeah, notice that we get this, this extra spacing here. Hmm. And that's from the print. Well, I guess, I guess we could do if file object ob, yeah, dot read line does not equal nothing, and then print that out.
hopefully that will work and do what we want. Not give those extra lines ethics.txt. Oh. Huh. That's strange. I did not do what I expected. Um, let's see. That did not work. Read line. It's not really telling me very much information about the read line function. Yeah, just read line. Okay. Well, is that what it would equal, or would it equal... Hmm. Might have to look this one up to find out exactly what would be read at the end of the file. Um... Let me try that again. Let me try something slightly different. Yeah, that's still not doing what I expect it to do. Oh, it's because it's advancing. Oh, oh, right. Uh, right. So every time we enter a read line, it advances one line. So I'm just gonna say line equals file object dot read line. And we can strip out the new line character here. So instead we'll print line here. All right, so if line is equal to nothing, or rather does not equal nothing, or an empty string, I should say, then we will print. Hopefully this will do it. Good. Yeah, now it's doing what I, would, what I want. Notice that even though I'm going to line 15, it still only prints out the first 10 lines. So if it goes beyond the end of a file, it won't print extraneous new line characters from the print statement. But let's change that back to 5. All right, and that's how you would handle uh, reading beyond the end of a file if you only wanted a certain number. So this was causing it to advance, and I had another read line which was causing it to advance in the as it read the file, which was giving me the the, the logic error. And just so that we're clear, this dot r strip will strip out a uh, a character from the end. I think this stands for write strip. Uh, trailing white uh, trailing characters are removed unless you specify a character, and I'm specifying the new line character. All right, let's move on to the second file. So e, call this one E2, line numbers. This one's very similar, and I'm probably going to reuse a bit of code. All right, let's get started. So exercise two, line numbers. And I'll be able to reuse quite a bit of code from my previous example. Uh, let's create the main function. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, main. All right. All right. Let's pro uh, output the program's purpose. Let me close this. 
this program outputs the text of a file with each line numbered new line and then we will ask the user for a file name input file name I'm going to reuse the function that I created from the previous example and that's because uh, mostly there's not a great way of using a try except statement when it comes to open files uh, in a repetitive way uh, or at least not one that's that's very straightforward uh, let's import OS and I won't say that this is the best way to do this and that there are certainly other ways but this is the way that will be sufficient for this class all right file name and let's go back over here and grab this while uh, yeah we can grab all that it's still relevant in fact I'm gonna drop this part so that will validate the file name then we'll open it well I guess we could put this part in a try where we open it except we'll just catch all exceptions we won't specify any exceptions and then in try uh, and we'll just we'll, and we won't loop or anything we'll just tell the user could uh, the specified file could not be opened yeah that'll be fine uh, this should this should catch if um, uh, this would work if the specified file is found but it is deleted before it could be opened which you'd have to be pretty quick to do that but it will work all right so the file exists but we couldn't open let's say it's a binary file or something um, what's next uh, oh well in, in this case we would want to use a for loop while uh, for line in file object and this is the easiest way to loop through a file and all we want to do here is print out uh, well, we'll have to have a counter so well, I'll just call it line count again set it equal to zero and we'll just increment line count first plus equals one and then we'll print line we'll strip off the uh, new line character at the end so like that and then before that we will print line count the word or rather the variable line count and it looks like there's a colon after that so I'm going to concatenate versus passing separate arguments and then concatenate that I'm going to do a tab instead of just a space I'm going to do a tab I think that's it so this opens the file this loops through the file where's my end main oh it's right down there I think this is going to do what we want So let's do ethics.txt. A specified file count not be opened. Okay. A count not be open. The specified file could 
not be up and all right let's see where my problem is uh okay there's ethics i spell it right yes All right, let's see what's going on right here at the try. <clears throat> File name, uh, we'll do ethics.txt. All right, let's step in. File name is ethics. We're opening it for reading, that all looks good. Okay, that looks good. I don't see the error yet. Let's restart and see that again. Ethics.txt. All right. It might be the concatenation here. It doesn't like the concatenation. Because I think that's where it goes. Uh, I wonder what that error is. So let's do accept. Um, so it is the concatenation. I'm just not sure what kind of concatenation it is. Uh, what it probably is, is that this needs to be converted to a string, if I had to guess. That's the bad part of doing a generic exception. Uh, you may not get the information that you need. Unless I can do, can I do except as uh, uh, just ex? Is that valid in Python? No, I didn't think it would be, because I have to specify except as maybe just a generic exception and then I can print the exception is it going to take that okay it looks good so far and I'm going to take this back out let's see if it's still okay with that all right let's see what happens it should say something about converting into string ethics.txt uh, we're just going to let it run. Unsupported operand for plus, int and string. All right. So, let's change this, convert it to a string. And let's see if it works now. Ethics.txt. Yeah, good. Well, there we go. It is 11 lines because the f it does count the first line. Uh, now, I, I did concatenation here. You don't have to do concatenation. And I think we wouldn't have had that error had I did line count comma and then that comma followed by sep equals nothing. That should work and we can just print yeah, we'll, 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 pr we'll keep printing the exception uh, the exception text ethics yeah so that's an alternative I just like doing concatenation alright let's do uh, rings that's another file I have in there there we go 
So do keep in mind that this exception catches all exceptions, and if you had other types of exceptions, except uh, file not found as, can I call it ex? Is it okay to duplicate that? It will not be okay. So we'll call this ex. Oh, ex. And I'm assuming. Yeah, we'll have to call this ex1, ex2. Or it might just be because I don't have anything here. What I'm curious about at this point is whether or not I can just call both of these ex for exception. Oh, okay. Um, well. Yeah, looks like I can. So always have the generic exception last and the specific ex exceptions above it. Otherwise, the generic exception will catch first and you may not want that to happen. And that is program uh, exercise two. All right, let's move on to exercise three. E3 underscore random, random number file writer.py and this is exercise three random number file writer all right so let's create our main function and I'm hoping that you just get in the habit of writing these uh, we'll output the program's purpose this program writes random numbers between 1 and 500 a user specified number of times to file I uh, probably couldn't make that much longer. Let's do uh, uh, let's create a, uh, a start range. We'll set that equal to one and uh, end range some constants here so that we can change this and make the program more agile. And we'll change this to start range. end range all right now the program is more agile so if I want to change that it's not that big of a deal okay and then we specify a file to write to and a number of times to write to the file okay file name uh, so file name set that equal to the input of file name colon and then number of number of numbers to write <laughs> oh dear I'm just gonna call it times to write I don't know if that's a good word. Uh, numbers to write. Let's go there. Technically, it's random numbers to write, but go with me here. And set that equal to file name. I just realized that we could have done some additional validation uh, previously. Uh, So file name equals, all right, so while the length of the file name entered is less than or equal to zero, in other words, it has no, they didn't enter anything, then 
we will tell them to please enter a uh, a file name must have more than must have one or more characters in its name a file must have more one or more characters in its name there we go and then ask for the file name again and end while now when we open this file for writing it will overwrite anything that's in the file it might be a good idea to uh, determine if the file exists because if the file does exist they may not want to overwrite it uh, I'm kinda of making this more complicated than it needs to be alright does file exist we have to import OS and random might as well do that too while we're up there all right uh, I'm just gonna grab this again but we're gonna have to change it just a bit so this validation is validate entered file name has um, is not blank all right and this validation I don't know if I want to do this one because it's going to make it so much more complicated whether or not we want to overwrite the file I don't think I will do this one because it's going to make the program more complicated than it's worth at this point. But no, you probably would want to ask them if they want to overwrite the file uh, so they don't accidentally make a mistake. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, Alright, so we don't need that part. So if the file exists equals true we want to know if the file exists we could say the specified file already exists are you sure you want to overwrite over right question mark Well, this would require another while loop. <laughs> while, uh, while the input of that, and we would probably, I told you it's gonna, it's more complicated than it's worth at this point. Y slash in colon space. All right. Okay, this would be a good this would be a good time to use a function but we're not all right so overwrite equals input so while overwrite Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm about to just say, well, you know what? I'll let them overwrite the file. So if the file exists, while well, overwrite is equal to overwrite dot lower. Uh, 
is equal to n for that they don't want to override it, then we can ask for We're going to have to have a way of getting out of that. I tell you what, what we'll do is instead of while, if override.lower equals to no, we'll just exit the program. Was it the zero it doesn't like? Probably can't do that in Python. Uh, nope, it's something else. Oh, not of, if. I'm hoping to exit zero will return. Yeah, we'll see if that does what I want it to do. So if the file does exist, then we ask them if they want to overwrite. If they don't overwrite, want to overwrite, the program just terminates and we won't ask them for a new file. It's a little overkill for what we want to do here though. Uh, all right, let's validate number. And, and you know what, I, I don't even want it. I mean, I don't want it, but it's we could do something like that, but it's gonna make this too complicated and more cluttered than I would like. We probably should convert some of those to functions to make it less cluttered. Uh, while, Uh, numbers to write dot is digit is digit not decimal there we go equals fo false then we'll tell them that uh, Please enter a positive numeric value and then ask them uh, numbers to write. That's not, this shouldn't say a file name. This should say uh, I'm going to call it random numbers to write. Uh, uh, I'm going to call it something better than that. Number of randoms to write. That's, that's a little bit better, I think. Not rightly sure if that's better or not. All right. So while the number is not a digit, or, and we'll convert it to integer here, or numbers to write is less than zero or one. Mm. I'm gonna go with one because you have to uh, you have to output at least one uh, random number or the you're not going to output anything. So please enter a positive numeric value. Positive means it has to be one. So that works. But one thing that we do have to do is right after this while loop is set numbers to write because I've not converted it to integer yet. It's converted to an integer. And I can, okay, so check out how this works. We get a string from this. While the string is digit is false. In other words, while it is not a number because of short circuit evaluation, this will never happen. So we won't get that error. We ask them again until they give us a a numeric value. So if they put in negative zero, then this is going to evaluate true, uh, negative zero, negative five. However, this will evaluate, I'm sorry, that evaluates false. This will evaluate true, and they have to enter a good value until it will continue. But afterwards, because we know it's an integer value that's good now, we can convert it to integer down here. And it's fairly safe. All right, so now we have to write the stuff to the file. So let's do try, accept, 
in try. All right, so file object and set it equal to open. The name of the file is file name. We're going to open it for writing. So anything that's uh, if the if the file does exist, it will be overwritten. Uh, for I'm going to call it rand or let's call it uh, R and D. Do I actually am I actually going to use this value? No, I don't think I'm actually going to use this value. So in range sub. One, two, oh, sorry, not one. Start range. I already created that. And end range, plus one. So that would go us to one to 500 instead of 499. And four. Uh, let's go ahead down here and close the file. File object. Can't forget that. Oh gosh, I hope I closed all these. <gasps> Oops. I didn't. Oops. Uh, so, don't forget to close your files. Did I forget to close this one too? I did not forget to close that one. But I did forget to close this one. So be careful. Always close your files. All right. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah, this should be one. What am I talking about? And numbers to write. It goes up to numbers to write plus one. Uh, in fact, I don't need any of this. I can just go up to numbers to write, and I don't need all that extra stuff. That will work properly. Uh, however, when I uh, file object, that not not closing the file has completely screwed me up. Right, and let's do random dot rand int, and we'll do start range. This is where I want to do start range and end range. Start range, end range. All right. And I think I need a new line character at the end of this. So I'm going to convert this to a string. So I'll basically throw that all into a string function and then concatenate onto it a new line character so that it's all on separate lines. And then once I'm finished, oh, an exception. Uh, gosh, I'm not sure what the exception would be. I'm just going to do a. Uh, there was a problem writing the random numbers to file. We'll just do generic exception. And this might be a good time to do finally. And we can tell them. Uh, done. And to when we start writing the file, well, technically, we could do this, but it's probably not the right place. I probably want to do it there and start telling them here. Writing file dot dot dot. I think that's it. I think that's it. So let's run this. And oh, did I forget the new line characters? Up here, I did. New line. Okay, so I'd also want a new line. Here. All right, and I'll stop this. And one more time. 
All right, so let's enter nothing and hit enter. A file must have one or more character in its name. All right, that's great. Uh, I'm going to call it, well, just so that we can all see what's going to happen, I'm going to put ethics.txt and it's going to get overwritten. All right. Uh, that might have been so that I would not accidentally do that. This would be an example of why we would want to verify that they want to uh, write to a file that exists. And I'm just going to do five starting out. <laughs> there was a problem writing to the random, writing the random numbers to file. That's why I hate generic exceptions because uh, it doesn't give you a lot of information. Uh, let's see if I can spot it. Dot write string. Well, if it's a problem, it's somewhere right here. Let's see where it is. I'm not going to do ethics this time. I'm just going to do numbers like I should have. And we'll do five. All right. All right, so we open the file. Oh! Okay. Let me run that again so I can see what's going on. Numbers, txt, and uh, five. <sighs> File name. Why have you no values? Why would I appear? I hope, jeez, jeez, lowercase n. That should do it. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, let me do ethics again. I'm sure most of you are looking at it. You did a file for case n. What are you doing? All right. Writing. There was a problem. <laughs> there was. All right. We got a little further this time. Now let's see where the error is. All right. Got a little further. All right, ethics.txt. All right, okay, that looks that looks good. Five. All right, let's see. Okay, that's good news. <laughs> Writing. File object dot write. We've got an exception here. Hmm. Okay. I don't see it. So this is throwing a file object dot write. Is there a write line method? Write lines. That's not what I want. String converting that. Okay, I th think one, two. Oh, this is too too far inside. 
I got to put it one outside there because now it's one, two. Yeah. Okay. Another logic error. All right, let's try it now. All right, ethics, five. Good, good, finally. And let's look at the file. There we go. It is printing out an extra new line character, but that's probably okay. Uh, I do notice that ethics was overwritten. Is there anything else I can do here? Well, we could do a counter to make sure it doesn't do an extra new line character at the end. I'm not really worried about it, but we could. Let's do, let's do a bigger one. Let's do, again, ethics. TXT, and we'll do a hundred this time, or a thousand. Yeah, it, it zips pretty quickly. Oops, I want to go up here, and uh, there are all the various random numbers. Really nice if you want to. Uh, oh, oh, well, that's that that ending new line character that causes it to do that. And there you go. Um, <laughs> as I uh, work through these, yeah, I'm I'm going to leave in all of my uh, struggles uh, so that you can, uh, as embarrassing as that might be, so that you can actually see that uh, you know sometimes you do have to uh, troubleshoot these things, even if you've been programming for quite a while. Uh, number four. Based on the previous program, write another Python program that reads the random numbers from the file, displays the numbers, and then displays the following data. It outputs the files, or rather, it uh, outputs the random numbers that are in the file, the sum of the numbers, the average of the numbers. Yeah, I'm not gonna do as much validation on this one so I can get it done quickly. I'm already running uh, over an hour. So let's do a new file. Random number file reader dot. Uh, not txt, py, py. So this is exercise four, random number file reader. And let's create our main method or function. And then we'll call it. All right, so let's print out the program's purpose. This program reads and analyzes, I guess, uh, random numbers from file, new line character. So we're just going to ask for the file. Let me close this. I'm going to do file name lowercase again. It's probably going to bite me. It always does. File name, colon space. All right. And let's print out a new line character file contents. And then we'll print out uh, should be two less, about right there. All right, then we're going to read uh, from the file. I'm not going to do any validation on this one. If you want to see how to do the validation, check the previous exercises. I'm just going to kind of try to get to this one as quickly as possible. Um, four line in. Oh, I gotta open the file first. 
So file object dot up oh, equals open file name for reading, not writing. And let's go ahead and close the file object so I don't make that mistake again. Dot close. All right, because of that new line character at the end, I'm gonna have to make sure that I don't read that because that's gonna cause a problem. So if, if, okay, so if line dot digit, I'm sorry, is digit, it equals, oh, beginning in parentheses, equals or is equal to false, or rather true. This way we'll only read if it is a digit. And if. All right. All right, so. number count, sum of numbers, average of numbers. So we're gonna have to have a couple of variables here to handle this. Um, I'm just gonna call it number count uh, is, uh, set that equal to zero. All right, so. Uh, sum of numbers, sum of numbers, set that equal to zero. All right. So let's read in sum of numbers plus equals line. <clears throat> that should work because it has to be, oh, And I, I know that they're already integers, so this is gonna be fine. So, but we do have to convert it to integer first. And I can do that, well, for one, because I know the file only has integers. Now, if it has uh, floating point values, we would have to rethink this. And then number count, we'll increment that by one. Uh, let's put that above. I think that will do it. I think that will do it. Well, it, it will do it in terms of, uh, let's move these up a bit. We'll put them above the file object declaration. All right. And now we can, oh, I guess we could I guess we would we would uh, so this is going to do all my calculations, but I do want to print print line and then uh, comma or yeah comma set would stay and end would be equal to that. I wonder if this is the way I wrote this program previously. I probably didn't write it this way. Probably did something differently. Uh, I could make the end. I could make the end be a comma and a space. That's gonna put a, an, an extraneous comma and space at the end of it. But I think I'm going to be, yeah, let's do uh, sep equals nothing as well. Okay, let's see if this does what I am hoping it will do. There will be an extra comma at the end and I'm just gonna go with it. I'd have to do this a different way. It did not. Uh, line. 
is never going to line dot r strip new line character because there is a new line character at the end then test if it's a digit let's see if that works this time ethics Ugh. alrighty then okay so let's not do that let's do uh, let's try that and a comma right there and we're still getting a new line character where is that new line character coming from? It's still on it. So line equals line dot strip out the new line character. And then we don't have to worry about doing that. All right. There we go. There is going to be an extra comma at the end. I'm sorry. We would want to do this a different way, probably using a while loop instead. Uh, and then we wouldn't have this problem. Because then we could, I mean, I. I would have to know how many lines are in the file. And this does not give me a way of doing that. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it because I've already ran over time. Uh. All right. Let's do after we close the file because we don't need it anymore. We'll print out two new line characters and then the word number count colon space, or sorry, just colon. And then we'll print the number count. We will print the sum of numbers colon, oh, no space. And we'll print the uh, sum of numbers And we'll format that if I can remember how the this goes. I think it's comma D that I want for integers. And then we'll print the average of numbers colon and take the uh, well format it to one decimal place. We'll take uh, the sum of numbers, divide it by the number count, and format that to dot one uh, f, I believe it is, if I remember correctly. All right, we're just going to run it, see if it works. There's a lot of numbers there. So the average should be somewhere around 250. Okay, I'll let it print out all the numbers. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the average is around uh, 246 and that's what I would expect. And there are a thousand numbers. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed as I uh, struggle through writing these. I wrote all of these over the summer. And I'm sure I wrote them completely different than I wrote this uh, uh, this time. 
as always, if you have questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day.